Hey everybody, so this is kind of in connection to what we've been talking about this week is um, having a common language on I ready just some basic things um, so we can be prepared to do some workshopping next week and I know some people are like Rachel this is old news so you know don't don't need this um, but if you're um, new to teaching or you're like me and you're new to North new-ish to North Carolina or new to I ready um, I think it's important just to not assume that everybody knows and so I just wanted to walk you through some very basic things I think are um, good to see and know. So in connection to kind of what we talked about today or we'll talk about this week in PSC, um, if you go to reports at the top, I have an admin account so I'm sorry if it's a little bit different but it should be about the same. Reports, I'm going to go to class and then diagnostic results. I'm going to go to reading. So, um, so one of the things we talked about was typical growth versus stretch growth. And so, like we were talking about Matt's model that he used at the beginning of the year, it's not necessarily his model, but what he's sharing with us, that negative two, zero, plus two model. And we're thinking of typical growth is as being at the zero point. What we expect a student to do within a year's um, worth of time, just the growth we think they can make in that year. And then stretch growth being um, basically on the road to proficiency or um, exceeding expected growth. So closer to the plus two. So this is where you're going to find the typical growth and the stretch growth. And again, like you're thinking of this as um, growing by this many points. Okay. The other thing I talked about today was something that always feels um, significant to me is percentile. So like, because um, it can be really telling. So like, for instance, we might have Johnny who had a 201 at the beginning of the year, and then by the mid-year, he has a 206. So you might go, oh, he grew a little bit. That can't be a bad thing. But if you take a look at Johnny's percentiles, Johnny might have dropped from the 40th to the 39th. And the reason for that is because if Johnny is not moving close to the extent Expected typical growth within a year, then even if he's growing a little bit, if he's not made the expected growth, he may be considered then regressing um, because he's not at a constant state of growth. So, just to show you where that is, here you can go to national norms and that's where you find those percentile rankings. So, obviously, this is BOI, but at the, MI, at the MOI, do take a look and see hey, did um, this child, I don't want to touch them, no, that name. Um, did they grow from the 59th and hopefully they've gone to the 60th or the 65th or whatever it might be? I don't know. So pay attention to that. The other thing that's important is this Lexile range. So this is the range. This is where the more accurate number. Um, this is important because some of you have been saying, Rachel, how do I take these Lexiles on M class and I ready and turn them into Rigby reading levels, like the level M or the level T, or the Fountains and Pinnell levels, like they're not, Rigby is actually based on Fountains and Pinnell. Either way, lettered levels. So um, this week in PLC, either today or whenever your PLC is, I'm going to give you some correlation charts that will show you how you can take this Lexile and equate it to um, a letter. So that will help you when you're pulling lettered books. Uh, so that's one thing I wanted to show you. And so once you actually get here, let's just pick a random kid. Um, when we go to do the breakdown for each kid, I've been asking people to think about um, the child's for the first cycle of intervention. And we'll do several cycles of intervention, but thinking first about their lowest domain. domain. So you can click on any one of these, and it'll pop you down here. And so in this case, this kid's lowest domain at a 444 is informational text. So this is the one I'm probably going to focus on first for the first intervention cycle. And I want to know um, what I need to do next. So some next steps. And if you click here, it'll tell you exactly what lessons you can go to to start addressing this lowest area. So in the next video, I'll show you one more thing I thought was pretty, um, pretty cool.